come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show Hello. podcast. We're coming at you once again from a deep, dark, dank basement and where we watch a movie and we talk about it every week. Coming at you, whether you're ready for it or not. Well, the movie is chosen round robin by one of the Saturday Night Freak Show regulars, one of whom's missing, but who's here? Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And we want to remind you that you can uh, get a hold of us on various social media platforms. We hope that you do. Write in. Talk to us. We'll read your comments on the air. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, and uh, wherever you found us, uh, be it on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, please give us a star rating, hit the subscribe button, or give us a review, because all of that stuff helps us get found by more uh, similarly uh, like-minded individuals. Like-minded. <laughs> Thank you very you much. You did a thing with like your hands. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These people. <laughs> These people. But unfortunately, it's a audio medium, so they can't see me. Mm-mm. One day, maybe we'll be video podcasting on YouTube. We could Facebook Live it sometime. There you go. <laughs> right in if you'd like to see that. And, I'm just uh, going to stare at the camera. And I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> you could Skype in with us. Why not? Sean, are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Another visual moment. Uh, so tonight's movie was chosen <laughs> Podcast by. Podcast is going to be full of them. Yep. M- me. Who? This guy. Sean. <laughs> I was going to say, Holly's not here. I can't yell my own name. <laughs> so what did we watch tonight, Sean? Uh, we watched a movie called... Is it a movie? We watched a thing. <laughs> we watched a series of photographs <laughs> that it claims to be 99 minutes long uh, called Cemetery Man. Also known as... Uh, de la Morte de la Mor. Because it's from the country of... Italy. And it's directed Italia. by... Michele Sovia? Suave. Suave? Michele Suave. Michele Suave. Come on, let me, let me hear it. Margarete. <laughs> Margarete. Lots of hand gestures happening, happening right now. Lots of hand gestures Dominic happening. Dominic Coco. I think that's well, a, one. Yeah. Dominic Coco. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Michele Suave. So he was... Uh, Grazie. He was the... Well, he was a protege was of Dario Argento. Yes, he was. He did... What was Dario Argento's thing called? Uh, wait, hold on. I know it. Uh, Dario Argento's World of Horror. He directed that? Oh, that's the... It's a documentary yeah. on Dario Argento. That yeah. Done, he had some part like, in that. You know, okay. Because he was also... He was in... Uh, we've seen him in a movie called Demons. If you've seen him He was in Demons? Demons? He's the guy with the silver face mask that gives the... Ticket, really? the Metropol ticket out and curses everybody to okay. see a movie with demons in it. Okay. He's also in this movie somewhere. Is he? That's what it says in the credits and on IMDb. I still don't know what this man looks like. I have seen his other movie. I don't know how many he did. I know I He's saw. He's done like 12. Seriously? Uh, Yeah. I would say like nine. Because I think the other ones were some other something. And one of them might be documentary. Or, you know, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The World of Horror documentary. Yeah, I'll, I'll say nine. Okay. Yeah. I think the Dario Gentile's World of Horror, you can see it on YouTube, but it's also on the Phenomena, the Synapse okay. Film Phenomena uh, release. All foreign films. Right. Uh, I don't think anything else has kind of made its way to America. St- well, I saw Stage Fright. <laughs> okay, there's But that I one, don't yeah. know if Stage Fright... Was like a theatrical release here, but it's a very odd. Like it's a slasher. No, movie. like I think it's a late entry slasher movie where a guy puts on a gigantic. He escapes from a lunatic, escapes from a mental institution, puts on a giant owl head, and kills people, performing a musical at a theater. I'm in. It's I mean, not that good. yeah, that I mean sounds interesting. I mean, sounds, it sounds and interesting. And it, yeah, but it turns out that it he, wasn't. That's this one. That's what this guy's good at. He's going to make things that that sounds interesting. Mm. And then, well, well, yeah. well, okay. We'll so, and it. then he makes them. <laughs> so, Cemetery Man stars Rupert Everett, yeah, an English actor. Mm-hmm. I am struggling to remember why we know Rupert. My, my best, best friend's, friend's wedding. wedding. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was like the big one. I can and remember. That's nothing since then. Like I looked him up because I was like, oh yeah, what happened to him? But he shows up like, and shit. Like we, yeah, you know, we all know you, you listener, know Rupert Everett. Like we all know Rupert Everett. You've all seen his we face. We just do. 
Yeah, because it seems like he had like after this movie, like I think this was pre Rupert Everett, uh, peak Rupert Everett. Mm -hmm. Right. So then he got famous somehow with uh, my best friend's wedding. Is Mm. Madonna in that movie? Julie Roberts. Is there something with him and Madonna? Like probably for some reason, I have Rupert Everett and Madonna linked in my mind, but I don't know. Well, I know they didn't date. That's (laughs) that's true. Maybe he was a backup unf- dancer. Uh, I don't think so. It's unfortunate that Rupert Everett could not. Have, well, maybe he could appreciate, but you know, couldn't appreciate uh, the uh, actress he was op- uh, working opposite in this film. Uh, the heavenly uh, Anna Falchi. Yes. So I don't know if she's ever done anything. Else I don't know either. either. But she is a sight to behold. Uh, Appreciation Club started now. That's right. Yep. So we're adding her to the list of uh, yeah. Saturday yeah I'll, Night I'll, mark, show. I'll mark something. Do we know who else is on this scratch. list? Of people in this movie? Jamie Gertz. Yeah, Jamie Gertz. Oh, yeah, Jamie Gertz. Uh, uh, Caroline Monroe. Caroline Monroe, yes. Uh, Made Genamic. Made Genamic, yeah. definitely. She got... You put, put some... Oh, Bill Paxton. Yeah, Bill Paxton. Oh, that's, yeah. All right. Yeah. We can uh, put him in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the girl from Danger... Diabolic. Diabolic. Yeah, I'm sure there are Hammer escaping. movies... It's all Carol, Caroline Monroe, I'm sure. Basically. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure, like, if you just look through that, don't you have a book of oh, Women yeah. of Hammer? Hammer I'm Glamour. I'm pretty sure it's most of them. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> yes. I will say her grieving outfits were incredible. Like, the fashion she had on when she was, like, grieving at the beginning of the movie, I was, like, distracted by how ama- how amazing they were and how well tailored they were it for is her. It is Italian like, movie. Weird to yeah. say, but it's very true. <laughs> yeah. They would be well tailored. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, that's very the one true. thing I guess you watch Italian films for. Mm-hmm. The There's fashion. usually, yeah, like fashion and production design mm-hmm. in their movies mm-hmm. uh, are usually, you know, I don't know mm-hmm. you'd say cutting edge, unique. Mm-hmm. You know, they are their own thing. That yeah. dress was like tailored within an inch of her life for mm-hmm. sure. Like, and then she had those amazing gloves and then like the nice big wrap around the top. Yeah, it was like yeah. I was like I dig this look. I was kind of sad it went away so quickly. I'm trying to remember <laughs> what she looked like with her clothes on. She does. <laughs> she had that black, really like tight fitting dress with the dress. buttons all yeah. down the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're right, production like the the look, the production design, some yeah. of the stuff like. It started say, off really strong. Yeah. And also, like, the slow-mo photography of this movie, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Like, when he's doing that thing with the sheet after he shoots her in the head. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Oh, yeah, because it falls concerned. down, like, as she lays down afterwards and the sheet, like, flows down onto her. Yeah. And I think, like, a red sheet flows over, yeah. over to the bones and the Whatever corner. they're doing there, I don't know how many times they had to do it to get it right, but that's... That was beautiful. Well, there's a lot of... I I've like seen, And this is what I wonder if this is what uh, Michele... Michele. Picked up from uh, Argento. Michele. Very close. <laughs> I know. Yes. I was just like, I'm, I'm going to call him something else. <laughs> we'll call him Suave. Mick. Suave. Suave. Uh, if this is like one of the key things he picked up from Argento was the uh, uh, this visual style. Because there's shots in this movie that are like, I mean, it's very, um, I mean, I guess you'd say they're showy. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're not as showy as what you would expect from maybe a Dario Argento movie. But there are a lot of I mean, even the first shot was like this. uh, The camera pulls out of the nostril of a uh, skull Mm -hmm. through like a series of uh, the cord of the phone. Yeah. The phone cord. And I'm like, how do you do like you got to have some kind of snorkel. Lens, it's a special like lens for that camera because, yeah. in order to pull this off. There's shots from inside a person's mouth. There's shots. Yeah, uh, I always appreciate the inside the mouth shot. Yeah, <clears throat> shot from inside the TV. There was a shot uh, of like a burning paper where the paper like burned in front of the camera. That yeah. was really yeah. cool. The guy behind it. Yeah, there's a lot of like that. The moving of the dirt from in front of the camera. And everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was wondering how many times they had to burn paper to get that like effect to look right. right. Yeah. Like I always like, think about the production the side of it. Yeah. 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 I'm like, fuck, how many times did they have to burn paper to get that look right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it contributes to that kind of, I mean, maybe this is where we're, well, I don't know. We haven't, we haven't talked about it yet, but maybe it's one of the strongest. Will we, will we talk about it? I don't know. (laughs) Is that one of the, well, let me ask you, was that one of the, or is it the strongest uh, thing that this movie has going for it? It's visual design. Yes. Yes. I will say yes. So it's set primarily in a cemetery called the Resurrection Cemetery, ironically. And which is at least at night, 
uh, the night cemetery is clearly built on a stage. It's got this gigantic moon and all of these, <laughs> the statuary, which like I wish you could find in a real cemetery. Yeah, because Colin creepy, would live there. You know, hooded figures and you know, winged. Yeah, I love that statue. The fucking after he shoots, is it is it a different statue or is it the same statue that he shoots the wings off? That eventually gets like death's face in it, where it's just the hood. Oh, that might be. That might, I think maybe it's that's the same what it statue, was. But that's oh, that cool would, subtext there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, uh, oh, the wings yeah, come was. off, and uh, yeah. well, there was uh, also that scene where he's uh, having sex with uh, uh, Anna Falci in the graveyard, and she has like the wing. Did you see the statue? Yeah, the wings are behind her. Yeah, mm-hmm. the angelic kind of wings. Yeah. There were wings. Yeah, because she was in front of the. the way that, that was statue a joke. Was that was the statue was behind her. That was a joke. Oh, oh sorry. Like I didn't see the wings. Yeah, cause man, was, this, you know, blinded by the beauty. Uh, blinded so, by the so what's this movie about, Sean? What what set us <laughs> up here? I mean, which part of this movie are you talking about? Because it's about a lot of things. As we start off, um, right at the beginning, it's about a man who takes Wait, care you see of a cemetery. cemetery man. He's a cemetery man. Okay, ironically so. enough. He takes, he watches, he's the watcher of the cemetery, and his job has grown to be that he must dispose of the uh, residents of the cemetery who come back, Mm -hmm. the returners, he calls them. Mm -hmm. So they come back. Uh, what's our opening scene? Like he gets a knock on the door as he's on the phone with uh, Franco, mm-hmm. dude. Dude, a very a palish green looking fellow with a suitcase. Uh, yeah, like what's the, the deal door? here? It's like, he's hey. the dude, but he's got a uh, he's got an ant crawling on his ear. Yeah, and he looks a little uh, dead. Yeah, and he gets uh, he's pale. He, he, pale-ish. Sure, uh, and he gets shot in the head, and then uh, Francesco goes back to his phone call. Yeah, it's very nonchalant. Very nonchalant, like he's been doing it for a while. Yeah, so he has to take care of the people who come back from the dead. That's where we start out with this fellow. The Returners. The Returners. Now, where we go with him is quite a journey. Mm-hmm. For a while, it's that. And then it To the point of redundancy, into, I would even say. It, like, yeah. There's a few things in this where it just feels like we're like, all right, if you're going to go somewhere, go there. Yep. Like, let's go on to the next thing if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And then when it does finally make that leap to doing something else, it's such a jarring way of going about Mm. it that you forget what is even happening in the movie. You know, like once they finally decide to move on from the redundancy of killing the returners, it just like it like there's no setup for it. There's no reason for it. It just jarringly jumps to this other narrative. Mm -hmm. He's getting married. Yeah, it's just. Well, maybe we should talk about. Well, okay. first of all, in the setup, there's also uh, Francesco Della Morte. Right. Uh He lives with a. um, Nagi. Well, we say he's mentally handicapped. He's, he's like Hodor uh, from Game right. of Thrones, basically. Yeah. All it's he, like can he got say hit in the head once is Rah. he said he can say yeah. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nagi. Nah. Uh, they call him Nagi because he goes <laughs> Nag. Mm-hmm. Maybe I think that's why. I don't know where they got Nagi out of Nag. You know where I've seen that guy before. I don't know. I've if seen him before name. too. He's a French actor. He was in the City of Lost Children. He was one of the uh, guys with the the Cyclopses. They were catching all the kids. Was he in Delicatessen? Hmm. Seeing as though they're by the same I director, know. it's possible. I th- but I don't remember him I mean, in it, but he may be. I don't know. He may be. Yeah. I feel like I've seen him before. What's his name? Should we say it for the record? It's if probably you on the can back. say it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I I'm know give who it, he is. I am going to give it a shot. His name is Francois. Ah, Francois. Haji Lazaro. Okay. Francois Haji right. Lazaro. Yes. Right? Okay. I've seen him in some things. Okay. That was my, my zombies, thing. guns, and sex. Oh my! Yeah, well, that's the American. Uh, this actually oh, did sure. get an American theatrical release through October Films, a company I don't believe is uh, around anymore. Can't be. But Can't I was be. surprised that this thing actually did come out in the states. It also it well, feels like it's a very late addition to the Italian zombie movie. Yes, yeah, nineteen ninety four, like twenty years, years too late. late. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, after the fact, but it feels almost like one of those movies. It's a movie where the uh, all the gunshot uh, sound effects are like the spaghetti western yeah. gunshot sound effects. And I'm like, have they not updated their sound effects library? Right, they just since nineteen sixty. They all go to the same library. Yeah, and they have to go to a library to get their sound effects. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It's I would all public almost domain sound it. effects. Yeah. yeah. Like can I, yeah, can I get, can I get the backtracks, please? Yeah, yes. give me that. Yeah. Let me put that in. Well, it's also the gun wonder... with the little dangly on the end of it. You know what I mean? Where it's got the like, you could hook it to a keychain and just hang it on your thing. Mm. Like, you don't see that often. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting gun. Mm. 
With a weird handle at the bottom and everything. It's yeah. an old gun, it feels like. Well, I didn't even notice that. No. But yeah, I, but see, I wonder, I don't know. That's why I was I don't getting into this. I wonder if there's like a reading to this movie. I don't know what it is yet, but that it is like some kind of allegory for Italian history or something. He works in a cemetery and is to keep the past down, mm. right? The resurgent past. But why is that happening? I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> and we yes. never find out. Okay, well, let me let, let's characterize it in this way because this is the best way that I can explain the plot of this movie is that it seems like it is almost three separate vignettes, yep. right? Vignette number one is the widow. Vignette number two. Are you basing this on the women that show up? I don't, it kind of feels like maybe, it. but I don't know if you can because, no, because it one seems shows like, up for like a scene. Yeah, yeah, but there's the widow. Mm-hmm. Then there's the uh, the mayor's daughter, and then there's the um, assistant slash the hooker, right? Yeah, I guess those two make a full third. Right. Okay. Because I'll go with that. It doesn't feel like the movie has like a three act structure like a, a traditional movie uh, does. No. Like you expect it. I mean, you know, part of the 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 criticism it's like this, this is a serial. That got put together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We forgot to mention it. It is based on a novel oh, that's by a guy named. It's a novel or a uh, comic? It's based on a novel. Oh, his name's not here. I think it's in here, though. Yeah. Um, you know, if you can find his name. But he also created a comic called Dylan Dog. Dylan Dog. Which yep. was very famous in Italy where they, the guy who uh, who created this. Sclavi? Yeah. Tizzo. Tizel, yep, Tiz- Scla- where do they make Scalavi? Tizano Scalavi. There you go. Tizano created Dylan Dog, the comic. Yeah, I've heard of Dylan Dog. Which is basically, it's like a Constantine kind of thing, where it's a private detective who communes with the other world. Right. But he based the look of that character on Rupert Everett. Okay. Prior to this movie. So, of course, when you make the movie Della Morte, Della More, you cast Rupert Everett in it. Sure. They eventually made Dylan Dog. That's into what a I was going to say. Did they make Dylan Dog into a movie? Yeah, I was say, it sounds familiar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Brandon Routh, former okay. Superman, returns. Mm. Wow. That's what it is. Yeah. That was a recent, within the last, that was like 10 years or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, right. I, remember, I was going to say, I remember seeing trailers for I that movie. I remember that. Wow. It all comes it's fucking like full circle. It's kind of like RIPD or Men in yeah. Black or Hellboy kind of thing or I Constantine. Rem- wow. You've seen it before, you've seen it done better. Yeah. But it's based on that Dylan Italian Wright. or international comic wow. book. Did he go into that like right after Superman? No, it was a while was, after. Was Superman. it a while after yeah. him trying to like remain like, I'm still here? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I think Zach and Miri right. oh. was before that. Or no. Was it no, Zach it and Miri? It was uh, uh, the um, Edgar uh, Wright movie about the video game. Uh, Scott Pilgrim. Scott Thank Pilgrim you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was actually pretty yeah. good in that. <clears throat> yeah. It's a good movie in general. But. But, okay, so this movie. All right, so so the story number one, if it's a serialized episodic thing. Feels like. Uh, is about, uh, so Delamore, uh, Francesco, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Meets a woman. Uh, the the widow, woman. Right, because I don't think she's ever given a name. She. She is she, yes. Oh, yeah, she's I kept reading things on IMDb where she is, is she. Is she. Yeah. Right, yeah. So she is she. Okay. And so he meets her at the cemetery, as you do, and falls in love with her at first sight. And uh, what a story to tell your children. Yeah. But he ends up, well, she, her husband comes back from the dead and bites her. And kills her, like, right while they're making love in on his well, grave. They've decided to make love on his grave. Because but, that's what you do. That's what you do. By the way, the picture changing on the grave is... Incredible. That will never not be funny. <laughs> I would say it's the funniest part of this whole movie, honestly. I love I it when it they... Is. Yeah, I love it when they do stuff like that, because there's other movies that were just like, the there's a picture in a frame sitting on a shelf, and yeah. something happens, and the face is changed because they're doing something in front of the picture. Yeah. That will never not be funny. Yeah. That's good. Well, this I, movie... I, sorry, I like yeah. thinking about the production side of that, too, of like, they had to take all those different pictures of that <laughs> actor uh, making yeah. those yeah. different faces. And make those and put them in <laughs> yeah. there, yeah. Yep. I just think about that elderly guy, like, in, like, some production studio, like, all right, now you're disgusting. Wife, face, yeah. Your yeah. wife is having sex on your with grave. the guy who buried you on your grave. Yeah, which is yep. also an face. Ant-Man story. 
And she also, I think, says that he was a he was a great lover, the greatest, you know, the greatest lover. And you see his face, uh, you know, this photo of him. <laughs> where he's got this smirk on his face because oh, he's like wonderful. eighty years old. Yeah, that's comedy, folks. But he comes back. He kills the the love of Delamorte's life. Does he? Well, we're not entirely sure because the the, it, the movie says that oh, he kills her, right? Mm-hmm. The movie tells us that, yes. She's a weird duck, too, because she seems to get off on... Uh, she's excited by death. Like crypts. She wants to see this crypt, which I read on IMDb. Real crypt. Ooh. Ew. Real people. Right. We Gross. thought it was a production design thing, which I'm still leaning that way as more. Yeah. They still might they're say, dressed it up, a little, you know. Sure, but... That's standing water, too. Ugh. Yeah, this is an ossuary, folks, as we are. Yeah, uh, told. I can't. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not going to. Where was the shot? Do we know? Shit. Uh, Italy? Italy? Yeah, I don't know. Do they have those things? Is I'm it? not going to put it past uh, anybody to have one of these things in a in a different country. Mm-hmm. This is just something that happens and that they do, and it's well, perfectly normal. Like, the cemeteries are much older than ours, too. So well, That's very know, true. Yeah. That's the thing. You get to wonder watching these type of Italian movies. Like, is there anything new in Italy? Like, new? No, 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 no. no. Italy was uh, uh, up to a certain point, and then everything stopped. Yeah. <laughs> because of uh, plumbing, Benito, building, Mussolini. Yeah. everything stopped. <laughs> everything stopped. Done. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. where are your roads? No more. Yeah. Well, she'll be but maybe, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, because, you know, I have seen other Italian movies where they have, like, you know, kind of, uh, you know, their version of futurism or, you know, new uh, construction. I was just saying, do they have? That's what I wonder. Like, because I know we look like into the future. BMW's we make movies. headquarters looks pretty cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we look into the future a lot and try and visualize the future of America in our movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do other countries do that to the extent that we do it? Because we just go oh, fucking yeah. ape shit. Yeah. Well, you look at anything the French, uh, Luke Pisson does or uh, even what is that? Is that england is, does it a lot too is that yeah, battle on ad remember the uh, okay that yeah. was, was that a french movie or mm-hmm. the one with vin diesel who's co-financed by the french or mm-hmm. well black mirror is english and that's right. all way is very much future. yeah does it does it feature like a futurist does it feel like a futuristic it's all oh, yeah. futuristic society. Yeah, in, every single in the, episode. like construction and architecture and everything. Like if it like is England pertinent to the changed. story, okay. yeah. If it is pertinent to the story, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Some a lot of times the stories are much smaller in scope than that, um, but it always features some sort of futurist aspect. Okay. So. Well, I wonder. We don't have any now, CGI. They don't have any CGI sharks coming out and biting Marty in the face, right? They, do they do anything like that? Um, or did they do anything like that back in the eighties? <laughs> I wonder. I don't think back in the. Mm. I don't think anybody attempted it back then. I don't no. know. You, you got to. I mean, Japan. Obviously I mean, obviously did not in their as much as we do. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, no. Sorry, no country anime. does it to the scale we do. You know. Yeah. yeah. That's for sure. But now, having said that, is it possible that they were intentionally trying to fill the movie with uh, old uh, to make it look old? He's got an old gun. He drives an old beat up BMW car. We see it's what a BMW look, or VW. It's VW. The VW. It's a bug. It's a Beetle. Yes. And so the Volkswagen, sorry. And then he's got, uh, um, I don't know, there's like a motorcycle gang at some point that looks like, I mean, I don't know Italian, uh, you know, a culture well enough to know, like, were there like 50s greasers hanging out in the 80s? Uh, <laughs> I've seen 90s. some of their movies, or the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. 94. It doesn't feel like this is a modern movie. It no. Or like the that setting of it doesn't modern, feel modern. Like 94. Uh, There's no modern technology on display in this movie at all. No. So what that, was modern in 94 or 93, technically? Well, but filmed. like Dead Alive would be like a contemporary of this, right? You know? Dead Alive like was it. set in the 50s. B- oh, and fe- but yet feels less dated than this movie. I would say, mm-hmm. like I Probably. felt that felt more appropriate than this. Like this movie doesn't seem like it can decide yeah. on a timeline. Yeah, Dead Alive felt like it was trying to be vintage to a time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, was recreating it was purposeful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this feels just old. But I wonder yeah. if it's trying to. Well, it feels old. But I think Italian. You know, part of what you're saying is in the uh, filmmaking technique. Yes, feels old fashioned. Uh, yeah, which you could use- also read as like not polished yeah. you know so that could but uh, it's like is that intentional is what i'm wondering but i don't know i don't maybe i mean is it intentional i mean in as far as it being italian maybe it is intentional because they use camera shots and angles and things that i don't you know you know see in american filmmaking right yeah unless it's like genre stuff mm-hmm. yeah it's weird to think that cell phones existed at the time this movie was made mm-hmm. though and yet huh. this movie feels so old 
Yeah. Yeah. And so I wonder if they're trying to make a statement with that or, you know, is there something we're, we're missing or is, uh, you I mean, know, the are they just trying to be timeless? You know, it's a, maybe a fairy the tale kind of quality or whatever. I probably. think there's a difference between old and timeless, though. You know, I think that there's a it's a fine line, probably. But, mm-hmm. you know, I the characters are also in a circumstance where technology doesn't really help them in any regard as to what they're doing, I guess. Uh, being a caretaker of a cemetery kind of feels like old fashioned. Yeah, but even like walkie talkies, you didn't even have that. You no, know, you think you'd have walkie talkies. But, what, but what's but what's Nagi gonna say to him? Nah. <laughs> but his, uh, yeah, but it, I don't know why I'm thinking of this. But at some point, there's a joke made about uh, his telephone book. He's read two books, and one of them all was right. the phone book. <laughs> and then when Nagi goes to burn it, you know, at some point, like mm-hmm. just burn all this shit. He's like, you can't burn those. Those are classics. Yeah. You know, it's a classic mm-hmm. piece of literature. So it's like, would he even adopt modern technology in the beginning? Della Morte is another odd character. He is, I suppose, with his name, you know, being of death, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's very morose. Yeah. Nothing really excites him. No, he 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 talks uh, like this. Which I think is of part the of the problem with the pacing of this movie. That I your think so. lead character never really, you never really get a rise out of him. No. Except for one thing. scene, I suppose, where he believes that he has killed the woman that he loved. Yeah, he does <laughs> yell and like, yeah, two or, yeah. Two he does have moments back. of like really jarring, sarcastic sense of humor that seems to come out of nowhere. And then he goes right back to like smoking cigarettes and, you know. Being emo again, like Are you know, like toward the beginning of the movie or toward the end, because his personality seems yeah. to shift. Yeah, toward the yes. beginning for sure. I mean, there's giant shifts mm-hmm. in who he is as a character as we go along mm-hmm. in this movie. Yeah, because mm-hmm. toward the beginning of the movie, he's dealing with the uh, the the people who won't stay in the ground, right? Yeah, and so he's killing them, and it gets repetitive. It's boring to him. It's boring to us because it's not really done in a exciting way. These are unscary um, zombies. Yeah, until we get to uh, the Boy Scouts coming back and that. <laughs> That's fucking weird. <laughs> fucking, I'm just like, oh, yeah. That would be disturbing if somebody just started coming at me like that. Yeah, especially like a. Wait, a did he find out? Twelve year old boy scout. So I mean, in that first, the first storyline about you know him, his great love, uh, her being bit by her dead husband, her dying, him shooting her when she wakes up, uh-huh. and then finding out, then she comes back to life, and he's like, how can this be? And then he realizes that perhaps he she wasn't actually dead and mm-hmm. he killed her while yeah. he, she was alive. And then she comes back as a as a zombie. Yeah. Was all that like before the uh, the the big accident with the bus that ends up killing all the Boy Scouts and the mayor's daughter and the cyclists? Which I think is like the second. That's like, like the second. Block. Yeah, because that's also the daughter. The mayor. Yeah, like I said, the mayor's daughter. Well, the mayor's daughter. The journey, like that, the, her, her character goes on, was the one that I got so hung up on because I was like, this is taking so many turns that I did not expect, and it that's just keeps going. Taking, it just keeps going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where we start taking the turns. We're just like, wh- what the fuck? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, We're here now. And this is maybe like a you know. I've, we've talked before about a narrative engine or a narrative drive in mm-hmm. a movie, right? Where this movie doesn't seem to, it doesn't, you cannot at any point in the movie feel like an extent, you know, like where this is going. Like, right. Yeah. No. What are they know, setting like, up that needs to get paid yeah. off so I can feel where the ending is? Like, yeah. there's the resolution to this plot line. Yeah. Is going to happen when these two people meet and, the, you know, yeah. have to resolve some issue. It's like, that's never really set up. No, because you're always working, you're always, your mind's always working ahead based on what you're seeing uh, in the movie at that time. And, like, there was at no point where I could just be like, all right, we're going here. Mm-hmm. We can't, I, I couldn't pick a destination where I even thought this was going. Like, we got to a point in the movie, probably 30 minutes before the ending, where I'm just like, that felt like an ending. Mm-hmm. That felt like mm-hmm. an ending to, and maybe it was. Maybe it was an ending to that early, the first vignette, where yeah. he's, uh, maybe that's what it was. Because there was even was, a fade out on that. There yeah. was, yeah. because yeah. he was sitting in his... Sitting in his house, because he lives in the graveyard, and he was just, you know, everyone was coming back at this point. Although that's part of part two, isn't it? This is after. I think that was the closer to part two. Okay. It felt like a closer, because I'm yeah. like, that's how you end it, where he's just like, this is his life now. Yeah, he's on the phone. It's nonchalantly talking yeah. to his buddy Franco. Making bullets, kind of blowing zombies away. Zombies yeah, as they walk in the door. An and the camera pulls back, and you see him silhouetted in a, or he's, uh, yeah, he's highlighted in, the, in a window. Yeah. 
and all the zombies in the graveyard are approaching. Right. And even Nagi is like getting rid of bodies. Like it's all very like this is what we do now. Mm-hmm. That was an ending to something. All right. So the second story is primarily about Nagi, right? The assistant who falls in love with uh, the mayor's daughter at first sight. Again, we right? know parallel to, to right. Del Morte. And we know he falls in love with her because he throws up on her. Right. He's a very excited fellow. Yes. He drools a lot Ugh. and then he vomits on her. She takes off with Claudio. Claudio. Oh, Claudio. The motorcyclist. It's a great name. And they get into a horrible accident with a bus. So, like, you get, you know, well, there, there's an entire biker that gang. That was so cool. Was that? <laughs> that part was so fucking <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> Honestly, the design of, like, Claudio after the accident that was, was so yeah. fucking cool. I like that. I was like, let me follow this story. Let me yeah. follow this fucking biker gang that lives here. And, you know, like, because, like, that to me felt very Return of the Living Dead. That uh, whole, like, yeah, little yeah, vignette. Yeah. And I was like, where's this cooler movie? Why can't I be in this <laughs> movie right now? This? Yeah. <laughs> or it felt like, uh, you ever see Grease 2? Oh, of course. You yeah. Know, when he comes back, Michael it's like comes the back motorcyclist and, yeah. and everything. This felt like the horror movie version of that. Sean's a cool right. rider. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah basically, yes. Yeah. Claudio. No, did yeah. you love me, Claudio? <laughs> that's just a, He's that's just a, eating me. I can be eaten by whoever eat I want. Anybody. Claudio. Yeah. That's just a great name to shout. Yeah. yeah. Claudio. Claudio. Yeah, but like the production design on him, like, because mm-hmm. it was like he was like one entity with the bike at that point. Yeah. yeah and like the, he melted into it or yeah, something. Yeah. Like and like that. he had like a pipe going through his right, head and yeah. his hand. Yeah. And like, yeah. 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 Like, and like, with it, yeah. I was like, how? I was just trying to like logically think, like, how did the. Like um, actor get into that costume, mm. and I, was, I'm I sure could he not sat on the figure bike it out. And they built it around yeah, him. that's yeah. what it looked like. I was, a, yeah, no, that part was so fucking was cool. cool, and yeah, it was so short. And the, the accident scene was, I mean, it, not like disgusting, but there was, I mean, the head popping was pretty gross. Yeah, getting but they, plowed they sh- over yeah, they by go the for bus. It, show you. Well, this is uh, visual effects, or sorry, makeup effects are by Sergio Stilovati, who's done like all the Lucio Fulci movies. I mean, Stilovati, I think, actually worked with. uh, Yes, yep, that was him. And he also worked with uh, Alex Aja, you know, because when when he did High Tension, he's Mm -hmm. like, get me Sergio Stilovati. Get me Sergio. No, he's Sergio. So he still works Sergio. Yeah, we don't need a last (laughs) name. Get me Sergio. Yeah. So this might uh, be some of his worst work, honestly. When the, you mentioned those movies, like in comparison, like I mean, obviously, like we said, the biker guy looked great, but I think right. most of their things did not look very interesting. Life-like? Yeah, or lifelike. Or life-like yeah, well, there's like, yeah. oh, dummies getting run over. Cool. Yeah, you can obviously yeah. tell when the dummy is being used yes. in a lot of like trick shots. But I'm like, you know, this is this is still the era of practical effects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, at least in yeah, Italy, but I would, I would say zombie area. looks better than this, and I would say the Beyond looks better than this. But they're not pulling off. Rusty in some all. ways, these are more ambitious. Like you know, mm-hmm. we gotta you know, I don't know. I mean, even to the point, the headless effect on uh, the daughter, because of course mm-hmm. you know your zombie, she comes back as a head, yeah. and uh, Nagi's still having the romance with her. But there's sometimes when you can tell, like you know, okay, that's the dummy head. That's the real, you know, her in right. the ground. And, you know, it's like, so mm-hmm. they're trying to pull off bigger makeup illusions than like zombie and, uh, and, and some of the earlier Fulci movies. But hmm, there's a part where you see through someone's head in the beyond, you know, I'm trying to remember that. It's at the I'll end. Take your word we for it. The 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 very end. Yeah, that was like, <laughs> yeah. that was like four years ago last time I watched the yeah. beyond. Yeah. It's like one of those pan outs because you're seeing something yeah. through the hole, you pan out and it's like the back. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I was appreciative of the amount of stuff that he was doing, I guess. Yeah. And some of the, like, the, um, you know, the creativity of it more so than probably, like you're saying, the, uh, the how he was able to pull it off is, like, you know, dodgy. Right. And by today's standards, anyway, you know, for sure. I mean, to, I mean, if you look at today's standards, I just watched uh, Brawl and Subblock 99, and there are certain things in there where it's just like, Oh, they're shooting a dummy. Oh, uh. yeah. like there's some apparent <laughs> stuff in there. Like I appreciate the practicality of it, but yeah, they're shooting a dummy. Yeah, the fucking Grim Reaper character, or whatever the fuck, that looked like a spirit Halloween decoration. Mm-hmm. That looked fucking <laughs> terrible. Yep. And, because uh, it was almost doing that thing where it's just like it was clearly a prop, poor prop master holding a stick up like into the frame with that yeah. thing. Oh yeah. god, it looked like a 
Yeah. This has four going. motions of movement. Yeah. I That's almost all you thought get. that it looked better. I just watched uh, Inferno the, mm-hmm. because I was on the, you know, I saw the Suspiria 40th anniversary disc came out. So I watched that and I had to watch <laughs> oh, not Inferno. Not the Tom Hanks movie. Right. <laughs> <Okay>. and, uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah, the Dario Argento okay. one. Gotcha. <laughs> and there's a fake skeleton at the end of that. It's like, ooh, wow. You know, I mean, that's very Halloween costume. At least this one's a puppet. I, I mean, like the puppet better. Right. Well, it I, barely moves as a puppet. Yeah. Even it, like stuff like that. Like I can appreciate it. It's just like it depends on what the filmmaker is trying to get away with. It's like what are you trying to do versus what you have. I'm just like, all right, I can appreciate what yeah, you're doing. Because uh, even the the Grim Reaper forms out of I believe they're burning paper at that point. So it's like yeah. all this black and charred paper floats up into mm-hmm. the air and kind of forms. Uh, the image of the Grim Reaper that then starts talking to Della Morte mm-hmm. and tells him, uh, stop killing the dead people. Uh, just if you want to stop them from coming back, start killing the living. <laughs> yeah. Right? It makes no sense, but okay. Yeah. It's just like, this no This sense. is where we, this is another one of those where we're just like, all right, we're going to veer this way. Mm-hmm. And we're just like, okay. I think a simpler design would have helped them out there. You know, like I think... Like they, they that like it was like a skeleton with a full face and a rib cage, and then like this whole tattered you know gauze yeah. over it. And I'm just like, just go with a really nice dark black sheet, you know, There's around something. a form, and that would be enough. Well, you know? and it's broad more, daylight, yeah, too, yeah. So. more Dementor. Yes, less, exactly. That's Spirit Halloween. <laughs> yes, where exactly. I I know I've put that in my front yard before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. they didn't have Spirit Halloween back then. Well, they had the whatever. Mm. They still had the haunting. Pretty sure they did. Yeah, Spirit that... Halloween's been around for like thirty some years. Also, I'm pretty, they I'm had it ninety four. Sure Spirit Halloween comes from Italy. You say Just, back then, yeah, like, I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm guessing it does. You say it back like then, like it was the fifties. So this is yeah. nineteen ninety four. This is ninety four. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, they designed them. Yeah. Well, I may, I may have owned the exact prop from this yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be great. Have that standing out in front of your house, like all year long. Like you know, I live in that house. You would. Yeah. So Nagi's relationship with the head, which he then puts in his television set. Well, I wish this was a Tarantino movie where we get the little, the little chapter titles where, where it just says Nagi's relationship with the head. Yeah. Like, that's what that would be. Well, this, this romance also ends badly because she Aww. starts to deteriorate. She bites her dad, the mayor. And, well, for uh, good reason. She was living in a TV before that. Yep. Yeah, that was really she, trippy. I was, I was like, this. I was like, man, if you were watching this on like some certain substances, this would be the most interesting part of this movie. Yeah, this feels like a uh, and the head a, like a moving zone or whatever. Whatever. Like, She's in like her uh, like a bridal. Uh, what do you call the headpiece? Which makes no a sense because she's like the, the fairly young, veil. right? Yeah, she's got a, it's Maybe a veil. Just how they, it's the a death veil. veil. Death veil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she got buried in a going. clear coffin, like a yeah, glass a coffin. Really, okay, and you could tell that they were the most loaded people because she was the only one that had that coffin. Oh, yeah. Everybody yeah. else had the cheap ass wood ones. And I'm, motorcycle guy didn't even get one; just got buried with his bike. Which <laughs> makes for an awesome thing. Where he roars out of the ground. That's yeah. very true. I'm gonna say it now. No matter how I die, bury me in a glass coffin. They look awesome, right? Like, cause I, I especially only especially if I get into like a gnarly accident where I get fucked up. <laughs> Remind bury everybody. me in a glass ass coffin. I want people to know this is now a part of the record. All right, it's official. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it's on I'm the record. Just like, oh, j- Jesus! Yeah, he died. Well, it was screaming. like glass, but like the like edging and like the structure yeah, yeah, yeah. was actually gold. So it was yeah. gold with like glass paneling, and it was it was real nice. It reminded it's me good, of the yes. coffin uh, they bury Lucy in, in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Mm-hmm. It was similar. That was two years before this, mm-hmm. 1992. I wonder, hmm. you know, or is that just maybe. an Italian thing? Because that's Francis Ford Coppola. He's Italian. Who knows? Maybe they do this in Italy. If you are in Italy right now listening to this oh, podcast. Oh, please let us know. How do you bury your dead? Let us know. <laughs> or, yeah. Do wealthy, uh, wealthy Italians get buried in glass coffins? I hope yeah. so. Don't know. It looked like a pretty comfy coffin, there was, honestly. Yeah. I'm an effort star as people being buried in uh, weird shit, like yeah. or coffins with viewing holes, coffee and shit. urns mm-hmm. and stuff like. Oh, well, you're well, talking about yeah, like yeah. actual like with the one with the coffins. little yeah with the uh, the bell that you can ring. Right, right, right. Like, yeah. You know, it's like oh, I'm still alive. I'm not dead. Hello, let me out. <clears throat> yeah. Oh Jesus! I was listening to something earlier on where they talk about that whole thing where like there was a rash of people getting buried mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. were not dead, so they had mm-hmm. to start burying them with like mm-hmm. bells on the top and oh, everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Terrifying, absolutely terrifying. <laughs> How many people were buried oh, and we never heard from? Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. No, all right, oh, make yeah. sure I'm dead. Like yeah. if you got to drive something through my heart, yeah, we'll just poke you under the eye with a needle. Or we'll something. do something that makes sure yeah. I'm dead. 
Yeah, okay. Just saying. You could still have the This is all me fish, planning. Uh, you know, a toxin. Well, this, well, that's what I'm saying. This is all me, like, planning for the fact that I'm going to die before all of you. So just, I'm just letting <laughs> okay. you all know. All right. You also if told I us do, the brain dead situation. We got I it did, all yes. written down. <laughs> you all know this. I've made this known. Mm-hmm. I like the way that it you know, just took a turn for the morbid, but this is uh, um, this is in this is a movie called this Cemetery is, Man. And this is the Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> it, but this movie does have a very morbid streak through it. Like it's offbeat because it's very just much. weird in the way that people react to uh, the other people in the the movie and these scenes that I think are supposed to be funny. Or ironic, like I want, but I didn't really find it. Like it's not laugh out loud. It's not funny. No, this movie is not funny. And it's just what, not. They're, they do some funny things, but I it needs to like. I don't know if that's what they wanted from it because there's certain scenes I think you could make laugh out loud funny, and I felt like um, we're like we're close to it because there's certain scenes that I did that I, was, I, I laughed at and I wanted, but I think they could have gone, I think in order for that, you have to go bigger, mm-hmm. but I don't They'd think never, they wanted to. They never committed to anything. No, like they would like half they asked all of it and never committed to one tone or the other. And right. that's the problem. And biggest problem with this movie. Yeah. They kept, they kept switching, switching from one to the other. I'm just like, all right, I, what do you want to do? Like I'm all for, like if you want to go for like the, the laugh, I'm like, I'm with you, but like, you got to dedicate yourself for that. Like go for no, it. Go big. Yeah, they weren't dedicated to it at all. I would have been cool if this was like, I was ready to laugh at this movie because there's certain things I'm just like, oh, I recognize it as funny, but don't laugh at it. Yeah. And we never, we was, never like laughed out loud during this yeah, movie. Not yeah. once. No, there, there was, was like a <laughs> chuckle or something. Yeah. yeah. An acknowledgement of, hey, that's, you know, mm-hmm. they're trying to be clever there. But, but I think but. it was ripe for like the, the opportunity to be laugh out loud funny was there. They just I wonder didn't go if it's for the it. delivery or just like by that time, the, you know, the tone of it has kind of, uh, and the pace of it has kind of worn you out. So when something's funny, it's just kind of like, I, I mean, it is in keeping with the tone, I think, of the whole thing. It's like, sure. it's kind of, it's not in a deadpan, is it's, it? Its tone it, is to it's, like. It's, it's not deadpan. intentionally deadpan. Um, it's more based off of like Rupert Everett just being like, uh, yeah. It's just, yeah, and I saying love her. ironic <sighs> shit. Yeah, all right. The time. Or, you know, the fact that, uh, what, he's impotent. Supposedly there's a rumor going around that he's impotent. That came in like two thirds through the movie. Like that came in so late. That came in and to be a uh, plot point. Pl- plot point. Use that term in? loosely. That came in. Is, is it the third story? What's you all know, about? What, this, when right? he shows up, like when he walks through the first time, he walks through yeah. the crowd of the bikers and everything. Yeah, they I think it's him. earlier on. We, they, I hear they have them, sex like, in the first act. Do they not? They have sex before the impotency thing is mentioned. Exactly. Yeah. That's what makes no sense. Yeah. Because he's not, he's obviously not impotent. They have, uh, yeah. been, but somehow this rumor has gotten around town. Everybody believes that he is impotent. This is, uh, you know, something that keeps him from being suspected of murder later on because he actually does go on a killing spree, uh, egged on by death. I think this is the yeah. third movie, right? Yeah. Where, or the third story where he meets another woman who played by Anna Falci, who, you know, falls in love with him. He falls in love with her. And then she says that she can't have sex with him because she's freaked out by sex. And yeah. or, so, or more specifically, uh, uh, men and their, uh, equipment, uh, equipment. Yes. Yeah. So the penis, so he <laughs> goes out by the penis, he goes to have himself castrated <sighs> in a scene where a doctor who can't bring himself to do it injects him in the dick scene. with, uh, uh, <laughs> with some so kind of chemical. Stupid. It's what we're, 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 this, flying off the handle <laughs> is this man. <laughs> like, just calm down for a second, dude. Yeah. Well, he's committed to love. He's committed to love. Like, he loves this woman. Well, see, I don't know. Does he love this but woman? It because doesn't make the, any sense because they had sex in the first act. Yeah. So, why, like, the fact that he's going so far off the handle. Woman. Makes no sense. Well, because like, he lost her. He lo- he and he he killed her. So he kills wow. his love and then finds now he'll her do again whatever, and will do yeah whatever to keep her right, including castrating himself so he can be with her. Yes, which is, that makes no sense. But okay. Well, it's it, the only way it makes sense is, is that it's set up for a uh, a joke payoff, which is when he's finally that is not a good chemically in, in a movie where they're not himself. trying to go for joke payoffs. Yeah, well, because it's the ironic tragedy of the fact that you know then she has been apparently raped by her boss, the new mayor, and enjoyed it in some way. 
that made her appreciate what sex is. And now she wants to have sex all the time and can't be with a man who is impotent. This whole I- like, irony. Like, this whole how, thing how does do not belong that, in this Michaela, movie. Like, it made me feel weird. Oh, I was I, I'm like, like what? well, the whole like, I need to get my dick cut off to like, please. This woman was very like, uh, felt very, like uh, felt almost like very, Mel Brooksy, like very, almost. Right. I was it like, felt this is very real big fish. I was like, yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a I was song like, dedicated to that. I was like, this does not fit in with this movie at all. But at the same time, this movie kept like, it, like like we said, it, it almost felt serialized. It, it, fit, it fit in with like every scene is going to be something completely different. Yeah. But yeah, no, I I mean, I had checked out of this movie long before that. So mm, I was like, like, oh, that. sure. You know, you're just adding to my reasons to not oh, my, be on this ride. So I guess I wonder. And again, I it feels like, you know, like I've been in this territory enough to get like the kind of this, the, the, the scent of this right allegory. Right. Where all of this is allegorical to something Mm -hmm. I assume about either, you know, the human condition, which if it is, I'm missing it or Italian culture, which in which case I'm also missing it, where it's like these people, these characters are types that represent something, you know, the idea that, you know, you would fall all over yourself to make, you know, to make yourself into something else and then. It turns out that that was taken, you know, was taken away from you, right? And I get, you know? and I get the the irony of him going so far, so immediately to do something to be with this woman and have it immediately come back and bite him in the ass. Yeah, I get that but portion of that. But there is a I way mean, to do that that is funny, and this movie doesn't do that. Right. Like, but a, it's like it doesn't want to do that exactly. to be funny. I know, but like. That's like, why it feels like it's it's after something else. But I mean, like, if we, but what if is we it? can't yeah. read it, yeah. then how it's successful is it? Exactly. You know, yeah. It, it's guess. it's like, for example, in The Office, when Michael gets the vasectomy and then gets it reversed and then gets it again and then gets it reversed <laughs> because Jan wants it, because yeah. Jan wants him to. Like, that is a, vi- a vignette that is delivered in a matter of like five lines that is yeah. hilarious and we get it and it's funny and then we move on to the next thing. Yeah. This movie is incapable of doing that. Yeah, it's like, elongating something we're just like... Yeah, ah, okay. yeah. And like t- like that was like immediately what I thought of. I was like, well, this has already been done in a way that is more efficient and, and also funny. It also lands the joke. Mm. This movie does not land the joke. Let's say efficiency is not the strong point of this movie. No. No. But I, I but again, yeah. I wonder if that was the intention, or you know, possibly. I mean, and we could be talking about that's the problem. Like, we can't tell is, what uh, it is. You know, the director isn't as uh, you know proficient as he should be, right? right? Or, or they're just it, not letting us know what their intent is, as far as making these things, or at least not mm-hmm. obvious to us. I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, this is, <laughs> I'm I'm at a point. Where I'm just like I feel broken watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what they're trying to do. Yeah, I was sitting there up through a lot of this, going like, I just don't understand. I just don't understand it. <laughs> but okay, so so this is what happens next. It's folks. not a good feeling. So after this, he meets uh, a couple of college girls. One of them is the, also played by also, Anna Falchi yeah. in her third appearance. Well, fourth, if you count zombie version of her. Very true. Right? Zombie, like, Mother Nature version of her. She's wrapped up in... Like leaves and stuff. Leaves yeah. and roots and shit. And she's been buried for Yeah, why do all the zombies longer. have, like, trees growing through them? I don't know if that's on purpose, like they buried it something. It has to be. Because they did something very early on in the movie where they had to deal with the first guy that they did, and then there's a tree behind them, a, a newly uh, buried tree, it feels like, or newly, um, and it, it starts moving and comes up. Like they buried oh, it over yeah, the yeah, body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, hand, the right. hand comes out of the ground right. holding the One well, her the tree. Her husband, like the old yeah. dude, had like the roots yeah, growing through right. his face, yeah. too, yeah. you know. Through yeah. the coffin into yeah. him and yeah. everything. It's just like, what? What is that supposed to what say? What is the key so, yeah. to this meeting? Either, either, right? Either A, uh, there's some kind of nature uh, allegory that, again, I am missing, or B, the tree is causing the dead people to come back to life. That's what I thought at one that point. That would be cool if that's what it was. Right. When the, we never when the husband that. was coming back, that's when that point really hit with me. I'm just like, is it... What he's bearing them around that's causing this to happen? Is it the cemetery itself? Is it the tree light, the plant life and everything? Mm-hmm. That hit me at that point. I'm just like, is it this? Yeah. And it's not furthered at any point in the movie. 
Delamorte so I don't know. wonders if it, if this epidemic is happening other places or if it's just happening there, but it's never concretely answered. No. I suppose it doesn't matter. Or He's does a it? hermit. He's not going to ask anybody. Right. It's also like... <laughs> and a fatalist, this We'll guy. also never Jesus. know because of how the movie ends at that point. Right. Well, okay. We're, we're on our way there. We're so there, in yeah. this third storyline, he meets these college girls. He goes back to their hotel or apartment and has sex again with Anna Falci, which I suppose that's supposed to be another... Uh, uh, Your joke. medication's not working. Yeah, because he's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this because I'm taking because medication. Then she's like, You've already come three times, you know. Right. Because I like the way that they they cut to that scene with the sound <laughs> of a train, you know, like barreling <laughs> it's along a train, it. fireworks, something. Yeah, you gotta gotta have something. Have monkeys. Some kinda, Mon- right? yeah, mon- monkeys. Yeah, monkeys. Yeah, we can't forget monkeys. <laughs> Thank you, monkey shines. Yeah, but it's also like one of the jokes that they set up. It's they they set it up and they pay it off like right within that thing, which is they don't do it throughout the rest of the movie. It's just like I'm yeah, on medi- I'm on medication, uh, this may not work, and then we get a pretty quick resolution to that joke. Where yeah. it's just like I don't think your medication's working. But they did that with like uh, um, Nagi. Would, yeah, after because uh, you know um, Delamorte does make out with the living dead corpse of uh, Anna Falchi. Does she bites him, and he's like. You know, am I, is it the bite? Am I infected? Am I going to turn? And it's like, well, at least I don't have to worry about Nagi trying to take my head off. And then it cuts immediately <laughs> to Nagi trying to take his head off with his shovel. And those scenes. So they do those. There's they some do. Of those. those scenes should be funnier, though. Yeah. It's, this, it's yeah. the subverted, like, maybe it's the way that Rupert Everett's playing it, but they, the scenes like that should be funnier. I think, I think. That has a lot to do, and with I think it, it is. Oh, yeah, the, the understated, low key tone. Yes, yeah, he's not going. Doesn't interest you in the character. No, he's not. Yeah, and he's not going over the top when he's dealing with those things. That mm-hmm. should be funnier. Yeah, I, yeah. Jokes. I, and I don't know if they they want it that way. They don't want the jokes to be over the top, or if it's just how they're just like, eh, all right. right. Yeah, was it intended that way, or that's what you had and you could edit together? I don't know. At the it, end or of they're this, just failing as filmmakers. At the end of the sequence, uh, he, um, well, I, guess, I don't know if this is the end of the sequence. This culminates in finding out that the, you know, so this woman falls in love with him again. But then he finds out that she's a prostitute, or she's paying her way through uh, mm. college. And so, out of anger... He sets the apartment on fire and kills them all. <laughs> Out of so I'm anger, like, he writes a check. So I'm like, at this point, yeah, because that's another joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at this point, I'm like, okay, so, you know, he's had love at the beginning that was taken away from him or that he killed accidentally. Mm-hmm. And then he finds love again for the same woman. It's all the same woman, right? And then that he... Uh, castrates himself for her so he can love her chemically sexually then he finds the another like sexualized version of her that he's repulsed by that he kills like with after intent. the fact he's repulsed after by the, yeah he's he repulsed kills, yes. by her you know, because she's a sex worker and not, and not genuine love because that's what he's looking for so i'm like is there something i mean because that seems like that's the central arc of this movie right of some kind of self discovery for Della sure. Marte or whatever, but I don't. I'm still like, mm. you know, even as I'm saying this, it's like I don't see how that connects to. You're like anything else. Yeah, I'm reaching. Grasp with that, you know, in uh, in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, when he's just hanging on to when Tweety Bird's picking off his fingers one by one. Yeah, I feel like you're on that last finger grasping at this theory. <laughs> well, because just before the Tweety Bird knocks you, you have, off and like, you fall, if that's the, this is the last iteration of this woman that we see in the yeah. movie. And she seems to be the focus point of the beginning. Yeah. So then it's like, okay, the movie has to be about his love affair with this woman or love with woman, you know, from a masculine point with of view. She, yeah. At some, because, right. Because that's her name in the credits. Yeah. She, and somehow, you know, well, that has to be what the movie's about, right? If they, I mean, you would think and because they keep coming saying? back to I mean, it. The like, hell? if they keep casting her in these different roles throughout the movie, like that, it feels like that's where they're trying to put their focus. Mm-hmm. But what, what, I don't what, know what that means because even once, you know, once he does this, then he just goes on a murderous killing rampage because his buddy Franco has been, you know, claims that he killed these girls. Yeah. So Della Morte doesn't care now, can't tell the difference between the living and the dead at this point, just starts shooting everybody in the head. 
Assuming this is actually happening in real life. That's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't feel like it's happening in real life. When he gets into that scene where he is visiting Franco in the hospital and he keeps shooting people who walk in, that doesn't feel like it's happening in real life. Because it pulls out eventually. And I think, like, one of there's a joke there, too, where the doctor comes in and is like, Sister, Sister Agnes, what are you doing on the floor? <laughs> she's praying. Yeah. Well, she's the, her blood is all over the walls. Uh, yeah, there's a gun, yeah, there's gunshot there, and she's on the floor, obviously bleeding. And- mm-hmm. She's praying. It's like, oh, well, it feels uh, uh, the surrealness of that feels above like reality at this point. Yeah. In a, in a movie where uh, people return from the dead and he has to kill them. Mm-hmm. It feels above that reality. What that says about where we does are at that say? point. Well, well, that's what does it say? I don't know. I don't know that the filmmakers are trying to make that very clear to their audience. I don't know that they've they have this idea, it feels like, but they don't know how to succinctly like let the viewer know that this is what they're thinking. Well, I mean, it's also possible that, you know, us sitting here, maybe we're very dense. I mean, it's very, it's a, uh, it's, I, if you can explain this to us, please true. do. Yeah, please, please do. Always the possibility. I that welcome there's the guy sitting it. out there. Who's like, it's so blatantly obvious. People for God's sake. No, you're right. That's no, come great. On, what, oh. I think my, I mean, we, we've had two surrealist things back to back. So I think I'm just, brain dead for my brain hurts from all the surrealist stuff yeah. I've taken in in a short it's, amount of time right. we're all it's the end of the year we're all dealing with some shit we've been watching some surrealist movies that have been punishing us and we are not and we have our in, seasonal affective disorder on top right, of it yeah uh, top we are top <laughs> Not seasonal affective disorder yeah. Yeah. right now. Still smarting from The Last Jedi, Sean. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm, possession I'm, was pretty I'm not at a good yeah. point, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not living my best life right now. Yeah. So maybe we're not understanding what this movie is trying to say. I mean, it's either that or the filmmakers aren't able to uh, like re- relay that information, like what they're mm. trying to. I And I think they're at some level, the filmmaker is... I think every filmmaker is trying to do that. They have something they want to say, and they're trying to get that across to the audience in the movie that they make. And so, what is the filmmakers? What are the filmmakers of this movie trying to say to us? And I don't necessarily think that that's clear mm. in this movie. But judging by me. the comments on the video box, we're clearly missing something. Uh, clearly, we're missing something. Is, so, did we mention that Martin Scorsese called this movie one of the best Italian movies in the 1990s? Bloody disgusting. Said that it was one of the greatest cult films ever made. Fangoria said it. Said it. Uh, hold on. Find that Fangoria. Uh, Fangoria said one of the best horror movies you've never seen. Right. Um, I can think of you know another twenty probably. I mean we're pretty before that one. Frightfully funny says uh, frightfully funny. Amy Dawes of the Los Angeles Daily News. Uh, Uh, We're pretty keyed in, and I don't. don't Maybe we're not. I don't know. But honestly, like this has never been something that's on my radar. I'd never even heard of this until Sean. I mean, I, I came across it, and I guess I never said that. I came across it. I'm pretty sure I was looking up a trailer for something that we had decided to watch. I don't know. I look up trailers for shit like uh, uh, Shocking Dark, which is, <laughs> I look at trailers for that, and then it just leads me down a wormhole of other trailers <laughs> for weird shit <laughs> that we will eventually watch on yeah. the Freak Show, and then I get to Cemetery Man, and I watch the trailer for this, and I'm just like, that looks like something we should watch. The trailer for Cemetery Man that I watched is not honest. Not honest to the movie that we watched tonight. But I can see how they could cut in a good oh, trailer sure. from yeah, this you movie. Can make it look a, like Evil oh yeah, Dead too. there's a lot yeah. of elements to this movie where you can just uh, bypass. I mean, even if you just watch the first first 15 minutes of this movie, which is all I think you need to see. But like, I could see why if you have only seen that much, you would think it's a great movie. But it, you know, even a movie you can enjoy watching. Yeah. it's just like zombies, Italian uh, things that they're trying to do, which end up being like, oh, that's it's so maybe in a version it's so bad it's good, but I. Mm. But this isn't until tonight. Uh, I didn't see that the word comedy was mm-hmm. next to horror yeah. in this the genre seems for this movie. That and seems like a like, retroactive. Oh, edit. Oh, I didn't. Maybe I didn't know what I was getting into when I picked mm-hmm. this movie. Mm, Cemetery Man. All right. So just before we go to our, uh, we're going to go to to mailbag. Mm-hmm. We're going to read some of your viewer comments. Nobody actually wrote in about Cemetery Man. 
So we're going to be talking <laughs> I'm about, not about possession. The last one. Uh, <laughs> oh, possession. All right. We can yeah, talk about but, possession. Uh, and then we're going to do our individual reviews. We will. We're going to find out what we really thought. If you haven't, uh, it, you know, maybe you'd be surprised. Who knows? Who knows? We, we I, never know. I recommended possession last week. So yeah, exactly. who knows what we'll do? Yeah. I honestly feel better about that movie now. Like, I appreciate that movie now more. After watching this movie, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Because uh, uh, like so, at so, least so that context. movie, at least that movie went for it. Like right. it went they for went, it. It decided uh, what it wanted, to and do, they committed it. to it. it. Yeah, committed to it. This is very true. But this the ending of this movie. <laughs> oh yeah, really yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. We, go for it. So at you, the end of this, real movie, quick, real long. Do whatever you want. Well, we're coming up on on that time. But uh, so. Francesco and Nagi decide to get the fuck out of here, out of the yeah. town, get out oh, of yeah. Belmora, Bel Bel Belmora, B- Buffalora, 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 town, right? Feels like get Buffalora. out of it because they wonder often, you know, throughout the movie, like what does the rest of the world look like? And they've never left. They've never left. They have that Hobbit moment where they're driving away and they're like, "This is the furthest away from home that I've they're ever been." Jumping on the bed and in. Yeah, (laughs) and so they go through a tunnel and they come out the other side and it's a cliff face and this is there is no rest of the world no the road has like fallen apart and ended yeah and ironically it's like the Truman Show and it's also at the beginning the very first but not as awesome as a a real a reveal as the Truman Show yeah that's true but at the beginning of the movie it's like this is why it's like there's some there's some thought behind this I just don't what the I'm frustrated right this ending makes it feel like there is a globe at the very beginning of the movie which is the the two like the first thing you see is a snow globe with the image of the two of them yes you just don't know what it is of standing right. at the edge of this cliff, and then at the end, they have to show you the snow globe again, which I thought was kind of like, okay. I fucking like, hate no, snow no, globe we... ending so much. <laughs> <laughs> the snow globe ending. The snow globe ending. And Krampus Nagi speaks. He speaks, and he speaks. Del Morte After is he reduced hits his head. to he hits his head. the... Nah. No, no, no. I don't think he's reduced to it. Or I think he chooses that? to do it. That's my take on it. He re- <laughs> okay, well, no, no. I think that we he, can't say you're wrong, and we can't say no, you're right. That's very true. Because no, I have no, no one says, read on this at all. <laughs> no, I think and Nagi like hits his head, is reverted back to being yeah. able to speak, and I think that the I character like of, to go home. I think Rupert Everett recognizes that as he's at the end of the world to him yeah. is the end of the world. Yeah. I think he recognizes that and he comes back at his character that has only spoken those moments and he gives him the only response he can give him at that point is yeah. nah. Yeah. And I as far as two characters who have gone an entire movie as one who is able to speak and one who is able to not to have that reversal at the end I agree with that whole interaction that he gives that back to him after he's able to speak I'm all for that we're saying from a liter uh, from a literal point of view of what's actually happening in the movie we're all for that but what does it represent Sean I don't know okay I don't, I don't know I, I I I know what I saw and I know that like all right Mm-hmm. That's cool, but I within the context of them doing that, I don't know what that means. It feels like there is something, there's something that we're missing. There here. should be the whole. I mean, it is about like you know his relationship with she, mm. and how does the ending relate to that? I don't know. I don't know. But who knows? But <laughs> who who knows? If you know, <laughs> yeah. dear Brailler, <laughs> if you know. Type, type in because you can type right. I would this? love to have Please someone explain this movie to me in Braille. I'll yeah. take it. I'll take it in Braille. I'll yeah. figure that shit yeah. out. I will learn Braille to figure out the end of this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, granted, if you write in, your comment won't be uh, you know heard until one of our pre, uh, later episodes. You're right, but that means you just have to listen to every episode mm-hmm. uh, to hear. Very true. That's good. It could <laughs> that's, be on it's next the catch twenty two of this whole thing. Yeah, but please, we would love to know. If you know uh, some kind of interpretation oh, of Cemetery Man, if you've got a hook on this, if you know, let us know. We're failing at our jobs here. Well, movie, we might be. I'm all for learning something new. Please yeah. tell me. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Do you think he came out of a grave 
and like escaped. Yeah. Like no. I one think he's. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's jealous. He doesn't get a glass coffin like that. Uh, uh, Colin, bravo! You hit it. Uh, We're good. Thank you, Igor. Uh, Thank you, Colin. Well, let's We're good. Re- <laughs> let's remind the good people how they can get a hold of us. So you can write into us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Also on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. By email, Saturday at Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And on Instagram, Saturday Night Freak Show. So, about our uh, previous film pick uh, possession. Oh, yeah. We hope you listened to our Did, epic uh, end oh, of the Jesus. year. Uh, Super podcast. sized episode. Oh, please do. That's right. Let us know what you thought about that and our choices. because Let us that. know what your top five of the year were. I'm all for like. If oh, you- yeah. Send them in. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to know what you thought were the top five. Maybe we missed something. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll talk about those on next episode. That would be great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so anyway, Jimbo Ice, who suggested oh, yeah, he, possession. Yes, please. What does he, he say? He wrote in and said, uh, I understand the director was going through a particularly harsh divorce during the time possession was made, and Makes it certainly sense. feels Obvious. like a spiritual twin to Lars von Trier's Antichrist, which was made under similar <laughs> circumstances. Call that shit, yeah. Uh, 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 Michaela just has some hand movements <laughs> yes. that would vindicate your selection. Because I said that in the wrap-up. I said you that scene was yep. done better in, yes. in Antichrist. Yep. Now Two I watch Antichrist. painful mm-hmm. movies to all. Oh, oh, I have it if you want to borrow it, Sean. Yeah, you're yeah, don't bring well, it. What the hell? Yeah. Just bring it on the freak show. Why not? No, no, no. Bring I, don't, it next I, don't, show. I don't want to watch this again. I don't want to re- talk about it. it. I don't want to watch this and then go to bed and suffer. No, it's yeah, not something I want to talk about. Sean Roger writes in and says, I watch Possession. Hello. Hello. He says, I watched Possession for the first time this week, funnily enough. I can't believe it may I can't believe I made it to the end. It's incoherent artsy drivel in my opinion. Can seriously not believe the amount of critical praise it has received. But Isabel Ajani is stunning to look at though. That was something. I agree with all That's of that true. sentiment. Yeah. Um well, Sean and I were heaping all the critical praise on it. I mean, it wasn't. I, I don't think there was a heaping of critical praise, <laughs> but I think there was. An Incoherent under, is a good word for it. Well, there's true. that. I think there's an understanding of. I'm, I'm not going to say understanding because I don't want to dismiss anybody. I don't want to say anybody didn't understand it. I'm just going to say that it was what I saw was something that should be watched by other people. It's a visceral experience, which yes. is not always what you want from a movie. Uh, so. But again, I think, yeah. like I said, you're going to watch this movie and it's not what you want to See but it's feel. definitely not going to leave you. That is one That's of the things that you're like, going right. to remember. All, the like, rest if there's a film that affects that you movie. and changes yeah. you, yeah. like, um, you know, the, I can't, you know, like we yeah. said, can't dismiss it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there you go. And uh, Jacob Eddy writes in and says, I want to recommend the movie The Voices. Now That's people are just one. recommending movies just like, he did it. We wa- they right. watched it. We shouldn't have. Okay, well, the I was. I but was that movie's been on my list for a while. Is that the Ryan Reynolds one? Yeah. Oh, I haven't watched that one either. Possession was on my list for a while. Yeah. When he said it, I'm like, well, you know what? Yeah. I should move that up. Right. Voices has been on my list for a while. Ooh. It looks like fun. It looks I know. Like that's a good on time. Netflix, isn't it? I think, think so. I think so. It yeah, might be one of those where it's like, them. coming January 1st, this movie's getting removed. Yeah. But it was one of the ones where it's like, that mm-hmm. sounds interesting. Ryan Reynolds, here's voices from a cat and dog, mm-hmm. which he also voices. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then it has some Dexter like qualities about right. it. Right. There's, yeah. there's a lot of interesting elements in that movie. Mm hmm. Wait, have you seen it? I have not. No, I saw it. Uh, did you see it? I did see it. I want to watch that movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's from. Like it's a, it's on my ago. list. It's yeah, on, it's my, on list. my list. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Okay. I so welcome now, suggestions, though. Bring there you go. Bring yeah, it. sure. Yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah. Give us suggestions because I was. We said <laughs> we watched this movie tonight. Colin had the DVD of it, and uh, so we sat through the 1994. We're assuming. Uh, trailers of movies <laughs> that they thought were appropriate <laughs> to put in front of. Uh huh. Cemetery Man. And boy, did I write oh, down three. 2006, this was released. Oh, Jesus. I'm yeah. sure. Well, I'm. No, the, come sorry, on. the DVD. The, the DVD. movie 94, the DVD 2006. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, those movies. Well, the Anchor Bay, that was what was so awesome about them when yeah. they would put out, because all the stuff they put out was like catalog titles. So yeah. they would put the trailers on their new releases, which were also yes. catalog titles. So you're seeing like Visiting Hour and Warning Sign and yeah. what else? Bad Dreams. <laughs> Three movies where I'm yeah. just like, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> yeah. These movies needed like, that's it's perfect fodder for the freak show. Mm-hmm. All for it. Trailer discs again. Uh, right. And bring those back. Well, that's, we've gotten some in some uh, suggestions from uh, movie trailer discs. Oh, yes, we have. Some of them are coming. They are Very soon. Coming. To this show after talking about it for so long. Okay. Big black so uh, 
the uh, now we're going to go around the room, and you're going to find out what each of us thought of Cemetery Man. Colin, what did you think of De La Morte, De La More? Well, um, okay, so yeah, the, the Sean's like, uh, you know, hey, we should watch this movie called Cemetery Man. I'm like, oh yeah, I got, I got yeah, Cemetery Man. That was what cemented it for me. It's like Colin's <laughs> like, I got it. I'm like, All right, done. It was like what? Yeah. Easy, easily accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, Little did I know. Well, I mean, I haven't. Wa- okay, so I mean, you, my, you own it. You I have own it. it in your library yeah. on DVD. But I don't think I've ever understood it. You know. But I think when did you come to it? When did you in 1994? Like, yeah, I remember. And, I remember seeing trailers for it. I wanted to see it. It never came around here. Then when it came out on video, I watched it, and I was taken with it at the time. I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, I think I remember watching it with my wife, and there was like you know these moments where it was like, oh, you know, it's like that means something. But you know, it's like. We're patting ourselves on the back for being able to spot the symbolism, but if you can't tell but, what right, the if you don't know what it means, means, then you're not, you know, right? You could spot symbolism all day, and if you don't know yeah. what it means, it's just, I was a younger movie viewer back then. I know, what um, is but to be like yes. there is, and I and I didn't know the the filmography of Dario Argento or Italian film, you know, at that point. In time. Whoa, what? At yeah. uh, what point well, were you when, like? This is when I was, that you didn't know this, but well, I wasn't able to connect this universe that I can connect now, this right? This is this is a quote unquote young Colin yeah, Clark yeah, yeah. where he didn't know this connection. Yep. This is video of store, Gen- wow. video store Colin when I was beginning my movie uh, education, wow. watching everything that I could, and it did stand out to me. Okay, so when I watched it, because I mean I'm into horror and zombie movies, and here's this like really weirdo zombie film, which isn't really a zombie movie. It's like an existential, very morose comedy thing and you know, i know there was the the you know army of darkness and evil dead was you know and dead alive i think was two years before this so mm. there was this kind of like anything that had zany camera work and you know kind of an off kilter sense of humor about it it seemed to be grouped in in my mind with with those kind of movies and that's who they were pitching it to um you know it's got gore that you wouldn't see in a, a traditional r-rated movie i believe this is unrated it is yeah. um so all of these things are kind of why i was watching it and these are still i think you know as i mentioned at the top of the podcast this is i think the primary reason primary reason to watch it the atmosphere is um you know it's visually interesting to look at i'm not gonna say beautiful there's a lot of like like sean was saying with the slow motion shots and mm. you know flowing drapery and you know comp shot compositions it's very nicely put together for what looks like a low budget yeah uh point of view this moment but it does have a visual flair to it um i don't know how else to put you in the mind of what you're looking at but you know knowing that the guy or knowing what to expect but knowing that the guy was a protege of Dario Argento, maybe if you're familiar with his work, you know, what he does with the camera would kind of, you know, put you in the head of like what this might be. If you haven't seen it, um, only if you, it took place in a studio bound cemetery set. Uh, but this time watching it, and again, it's been a while since I watched it, but I've seen it at least, you know, VHS, DVD, bought the DVD when the Anchor Bay one came out. Uh, maybe you've watched it, you know, a couple of times, uh, and watching it tonight, I think, I don't know if it's, you know, one of those things where, again, the energy of the room was like so dead, <laughs> you know, where I knew this was not going over well. And I wasn't having, you know, I mean, it did, it felt like, I'm like, well, what is the running time in this? Is like 115 minutes or something. When you said it was 99 minutes, I was, no, no, no. no. it has no forward propulsive momentum. And I think, um, I don't know. I mean, I can excuse, you know, like I saw, I think black beyond the black rainbow had like somewhere it was heading. Oh, like, for sure. At some <laughs> yeah. point, you they know, they moved that, at lightning speed compared right. to this movie. Like it really did. Well, it had you, a point. You can at least tell that Elena and Dr. Niles are going to have to confront each other. So you're like, I know that there is an ending approaching. Exactly. Where this right. one, I can't, you can't don't know it. what the ending is going to, no, you know, like, I, yeah. So and there's nothing that gives us like, we're going here. Yeah. It doesn't exist. So you're kind of cast adrift in this kind of narrative, which does, you know, now that we're talking about it, it does seem episodic, but I do feel that it is focused on something that the director is trying to communicate. It's just missing me. He is not communicating with me, and it seems like I am the audience for this movie, 
and I'm not getting it. So it feels like, I don't know. I I know you sit there and go like, well, Martin Scorsese is saying he thought it was fantastic. And I assume doesn't matter. he knows he more matter. about He's movies. He's crazy. That, you know, so, I, but that's the thing where I don't know if, you know, you can't dismiss it, you know, but I, it didn't connect with me tonight, you know? So would I recommend it? I own it. So I'm like, yeah, you got it. No, well, you don't have to, you don't have to go no. seek this out. I think the only, the only person out there that would want to see this is if you are, um, you know, if you're a fan of the Italian horror subgenre, I think specifically you, because you've yeah, seen you have to see a lot of stuff that doesn't make any good goddamn sense and is, uh, you know, a visual experience. Well, then you're going to give this a little bit more breathing room. Uh, for everybody else, I think you're going you're gonna to be bored out of your mind. Or it's just not going to connect. Um, so I think maybe that is a pa- uh, pass. You don't need to see uh, Cemetery Man. Michaela. Uh, this movie's a mess. Like, it, it feels like, you know, I, I know I say on a lot of movies they need to embrace the editing process. This movie, I don't know if that's the problem. I think it's more just like this. <laughs> the narrative is just non-existent. It needs to embrace the narrative. Problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's not editing that's a problem. It's it's a, a, a basic plot that's the problem that you can follow from start to finish. It. And, you know, I, I feel like I've seen a lot of movies lately that feel like serialized stories. And that is like so aggravating as a viewer to be watching a movie and to be and, and even when you are on board with it, for it to get so far from the main plot that you're like, wait, why is what they are doing now important? And I feel like I'm, I'm in this like streak of movies like that right now. And I, I it is not weighing well on my like sanity for movie watching, you <laughs> know, like, doing well. yeah, <laughs> like I, I cannot take another movie where like characters are sent on a side, a side quest for, you know, with that, <laughs> that I cannot even make sense of how it ties back to the main story. I can't do it anymore. And this movie is incomprehensible. Like it is, I don't know what the plot is to this. I could take a stab at it, but I I don't know. This movie's just, uh, it's a hot mess, and I don't really get what point it's trying to make or what allegory it's trying to make or what statement it's trying to say. It, But yet it seems like relatively well budgeted, which is weird for a movie that has a plot that seems so like my first time writing a script. You know, it's everything. Co financed by three countries yeah. France, Germany, and Italy. Yeah, yeah, because these people had to go out and find three countries who were just like, yeah, we're willing to do that. Right, they had to find people who were just like, yeah, we'll put yeah. money towards this. And it doesn't, it doesn't fully commit to anything. It doesn't fully commit to being like gory and dark. It doesn't fully commit to being humorous. It doesn't go far enough to be like an Evil Dead Two or like, um, you Dead know, Alive. Dead Alive. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. go far enough to be that. Which like, those are your contemporaries, especially at this time this came out. If you're if you're not going to go to that length, don't even put humor in it. Is kind of how I'm looking at it. You know, you can't half ass it. I don't think. And the jokes just don't land. They just fall so flat, and they're just not well delivered and not well written, and just that it, everything is just so choppy and jarring, and nothing is smooth and transitional. And I, I would not recommend it. Sean, what do you think? Um, I don't know. I want to know what you were thinking, Martin Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do. I'm just like, I, oh, it's tough for this movie. Like. They're not good at any specific thing for this. I'm just like, I don't know. It, it feels like a mess, and they want to be too many things, and like you have to dedicate yourself to one thing, and they don't. So I have to pass on this movie. Um, <laughs> I think we'll all be reading this booklet that came with the yeah. DVD. To yeah. try and like, put, what, piece well, yeah, it together. What, what did you from what an you admirer mean? of the yeah yeah because it's not from anyone like it's from some person who wrote something on this movie at some point. Um, and we'll read that and decide what they want it to be. But yeah, yeah maybe I, we'll I can't. know after we read it. Maybe, but like it takes like it's a movie that takes some like looking into to decide like oh this is what you want it to be. But they don't make that apparent in the movie we watched. So. It's too much. It's nine, like I said, ninety nine minutes, and we it felt like three hours. So I can't recommend this. Um, probably don't watch it. All right, probably don't. Watch probably it. don't watch it. I don't well think said, so. Sean. I was gonna say like I, <laughs> that feels like me not dedicating myself. Don't, all right, don't watch this movie. I don't recommend it. 
pass. All right. There so that's Cemetery Man. Next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Holly. <laughs> yes, yes. I say question mark. Yes. She, wasn't, she wasn't here tonight, yeah. so that's yeah. what we're doing. Right? So, uh, Holly, what are we picking next week? Well, Holly wrote in. She's going to be picking Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, actually, yikes. I think you're supposed to say Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat! Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So that's going to be yeah. next week on the Saturday Night Freak Dear Show. Dear Lord, please join us for that. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.